Hi, my name is Allie and I work at the Wood County District Public Library in the Children's Place. And I'm here to read you some stories. Uh, real quick before we start, I hope you're noticing my wonderful crown. You can make one too. You pick up one of our Connect magazines and in the back, you can make a story time crown as well and then we can wear our crowns together while we read stories. Uh, you can also sign up for our summer reading program and travel through fairy tale land. Pretty fun and you get some sweet prizes. So you can go ahead and go on our website, wcdpl.org, and sign up for our summer reading program. This is my fairy tale dragon here. He's my story time dragon and I had him in my last story time and I figured probably wants to stay. So he's going to hang out and listen to stories today too. Our first story that we're going to read today is a fractured fairy tale. What that means is I'm sure you know the story of Cinderella and I'm sure you know the story of Little Red Riding Hood or Hansel and Gretel. And this one mashes it all up and changes the story's outcome. So it has a different ending. Things happen a little different, but they use the same characters. That's called a fractured fairy tale versus just a regular fairy tale that everyone's kind of familiar with. So this is our first one today. It's called Cinderella's Stepsister and the Big Bad Wolf. And it's by Lorraine Carey, illustrated by Miggy Blanco. Oh, oh, so pink. Look at that. Just feeding a mouse some cheese, making friends here. Look at that kitty cat, orange. And this book is published by Candlewick Press. So thank you to them for making such a cool fractured fairy tale story time for us. Here is Cinderella. Here is her stepmother, Mrs. Ugly. Oh gosh. And here are the ugly stepsisters, one, two, and three. Three stepsisters. Hmm. That's different already. And Cinderella has a really grumpy face on. Oh, oh, right here. You already know the two ugly sisters who are horrible, nasty, and mean. But Gertie, there she is in the pink dress, their little sister was nice. I've never heard of Gertie. While Cinderella lazed about and did absolutely nothing, Gertie watered the pumpkins, took care of the mice, and did all of the housework. That's not fair. Well, of course, the ugly family despaired. That means they're very sad. They were ashamed. That means they're embarrassed. They hid little Gertie away and they never let her go anywhere with them. They didn't like her. Then one morning, a special invitation arrived. Do you know what that invitation is? Do you remember in the, step, in the Cinderella story? invitation to the ball. Oh, look, said Mrs. Ugly. We are invited to a grand ball at the palace tonight. A ball, cried Gertie. Oh, please, can I go? You, said Mrs. Ugly. Go to the ball? You're a disgrace to the ugly name. You don't walk ugly. You don't talk ugly. And with that shocking smile on your face, you don't even look ugly. But I am an ugly sister, Gertie said, and I know I can be bad. I know I can. You'll need help, said Mrs. Ugly. A lesson from the wicked queen should do the trick. 
The story is changing. The Wicked Queen is from the Snow White story. So that afternoon, Gertie was sent to learn from the Wicked Queen, who was just about to visit Snow White with a poisoned apple. <gasps> oh my gosh. First, the Wicked Queen disguised herself as a little old lady. Then she knocked on the door. Hello, my dear, she said to Snow White. Won't you take a bite of this lovely apple? Look out, Snow White, Gertie shouted. The apple is poisoned. Uh, no thanks then, said Snow White, and she shut the door. Well, the wicked queen was furious. She was so mad and sent Gertie home faster than a streak of lightning. Mrs. Ugly was very angry, but Gertie begged for another chance. Oh, all right, said Mrs. Ugly, but this time you're going to see the worst witch of all. What did that be? Being bad is easy, said the worst witch. Let me show you how. The oven's nice and hot, and I'm planning a delicious dinner. Which wish is this? Hansel! Gretel! Come in! children. Oh, it's the Hansel and Gretel witch. She likes to eat children. <gasps> Gertie cried. She tried so hard, but she just couldn't keep quiet. Don't come in, she yelled. The witch is planning to eat you for dinner. Uh, in that case, we won't be staying, said Hansel and Gretel, but we'll take some snacks with us. <laughs> they took some snacks from the witch's candy house. Back home, Mrs. Ugly was furious. Oh, please, Gertie wailed. Please let me go to the ball. I can be mean and bad like a real ugly sister. I know I can. And she cried so much that Mrs. Ugly agreed to give her one last chance. But this time, Gertie was sent to the meanest and nastiest villain of all. What it mean? The big bad wolf. Oh my gosh. Who happened to be wearing a dress? Do you think it's grandma's dress? It might be. So you want to be ugly, huh? Said the wolf. You want to be bad? I do, said Gertie. I do, I do. Well, said the wolf, you're just in time. Watch this. Suddenly, there was a loud knock, knock, knock at the door. Who could it be? Who comes to the door while the wolf is dressed up in Grandma's dress? <gasps> Little Red. Little Red Riding Hood skipped in. Oh, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. What big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, said the wolf. Oh, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. What big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, said the wolf. Oh, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. What big teeth you have. All the better to... Stop, Gertie shouted. That's not your grandma. That's the big bad wolf. And Little Red Riding Hood scampered off. The wolf turned to Gertie and drooled. <gasps> wolf gonna eat Gertie? Please don't eat me, said Gertie. I've tried so hard to be mean and bad like the rest of my family so I could go to the ball and... Ball, said the wolf. Did you just say... Ball? I've always wanted to go to the ball. Come on, said Gertie. Let's see what we can do. By the time Gertie and the wolf arrived home, Mrs. Ugly and the two ugly sisters had already left for the ball. We're too late, said Gertie. When Hoop should appear, 
but a beautiful fairy. I'm your fairy godmother, she said. She looked at Gertie and the wolf. And I expect you two want to go to the ball, don't you? Stop, shouted an angry voice. It was Cinderella. What about me, she screeched. I've been waiting all night for the fairy godmother to get me to that ball. That's usually who the fairy godmother helps. Well, the fairy godmother does not like bad manners. So she quickly turned Cinderella into a... Mouse. There it is. There's Cinderella as a mouse. But Gertie and the wolf went to the ball in a beautiful new dresses. And they had a lovely time. So lovely, in fact, that Gertie and Prince Charming fell in love and married soon after. And as for Mrs. Ugly and Gertie's two ugly sisters, well, no one's quite known why, but they were never, ever seen again. Oh my gosh. I think the wolf ate them. <laughs> the end. That was a pretty good story. I liked that one. It was a fractured fairy tale. It mashed up all sorts of fairy tales and made them different. Right, we're going to sing a song. Let's sing a song. I know what we should sing. I know a song that has another fairy in it that uses magic. Are you ready? Warm up your fingers. Here you go. Little bunny foo foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and popping them on the head. Down comes the fairy godmother and she said, Little bunny foo foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and popping them on the head. I'll give you three chances. And if you don't behave, I'll turn you into a goon. So the next day, little bunny foo foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and popping them on the head. Down came the fairy godmother and she said, little bunny foo foo. Boo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and popping them on the head. I'll give you two more chances to behave. And if you don't, I'll turn you into a goon. So the next day, little bunny foo foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and popping them on the head. He is not learning. Down comes the fairy godmother, and she said, Little bunny foo foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and popping them on the head. I'll give you one more chance, and if you don't behave, I'm going to turn you into a goon. So the next day, little bunny foo foo hopping through the forest scooping up the field mice and popping them on the head oh my gosh so down came the fairy godmother and she said little bunny foo foo i don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and popping them on the head i gave you three chances you didn't listen. So now I'm going to turn you into a goon. And she did. And the moral of that story is hair today, gone tomorrow. Oops. Hair today, goon tomorrow. <laughs> he was a rabbit, but now he's a goon. goon. My gosh. All right. Are you ready for another story? Are you ready for another story? Here we go.
This one's called The Storybook Night by Helen Doherty and Thomas Doherty. And they work together. They're authors and illustrators together. This book was published by Source Books, Jabberwocky. They made this cool book for us, and we're really glad to have it for story time. Leo was a gentle knight in thought and word and deed. So he was kind in his thoughts when he was thinking and words when he was speaking and his actions, those are deeds. While other knights liked fighting, Leo liked to sit and read. He was kind to every creature. He wouldn't hurt a fly. When mom and dad said, knights must fight, he couldn't quite see why. One morning, Leo's parents said they'd like to have a chat. There was nothing wrong with reading, but he couldn't just do that. They'd seen an ad that morning in their favorite magazine. A dragon needed taming. Leo wasn't very keen. He wasn't interested. Nonsense! You'll enjoy it! It'll stop you getting bored. In case the dragon's scary, here's a brand new shield and sword. Leo packed some sandwiches and lots of books, of course. Then with a sigh, he saddled up old Ned, his faithful horse. He hadn't traveled far, though the sun had risen high, when suddenly a fearsome creature swooped down from the sky. It had a lion's body, but it had an eagle's wings. A griffin, marveled Leo, who had read about such things. Come on, snarled the griffin. I dare you to fight. I'd rather not, said Leo. It wouldn't quite be right. I've got my brand new sword with me, so I'd be bound to win it. But how about a story with some pictures of you in it? Yes, please. The griffin nodded. He really was quite vain. So Leo read a book to him once, twice, and then again. It's yours to keep, said Leo, as he clambered back on Ned. Oh, thank you, cried the griffin, and he bowed his noble head. Leo rode for hours through the heat. It was quite extreme. Then stopped to have his picnic by a welcome mountain stream. Uh-oh, who's that? Who dares trespass on my bridge, inquired a hungry troll. It's only me, said Leo. Would you like to share my role? The troll just laughed. No thanks, he growled. I'll think I'll just eat you. But Leo said, my armor's pretty difficult to chew. I've got a brilliant book, though, if you hang on just a minute. It's full of juicy goats, and look, it's even got you in it. I bet it is the three billy goats gruff. Hmm, that sounds good, the troll replied. His hunger put on hold. So Leo read the story with some changes, truth be told. It's yours to keep, said Leo as he clambered back on Ned. Oh, thank you, cried the grateful troll and bowed his heavy head. Leo kept on riding through that long, hot afternoon. At last he came upon a town as empty as the moon. The leaves were burnt on every tree, the grass and flowers too. He'd seen some messy streets before, but this was something new. When he, what he saw around the corner set him shaking in his shoes. The most enormous dragon who'd just woken from a snooze. The dragon raised his eyebrows. Not another pesky knight. Don't worry, Leo told him. I haven't come to fight. I've got the most amazing book with loads of dragons in it. But it's going in the trash unless you clean up right this minute. 
it's important to keep things clean. You have to clean before you can do fun things. I'm sure your parents have told you that before. Oh, don't do that, the dragon cried. I'll clean it up right now. But I'm really bad at tidying. Perhaps you'll show me how? So Leo taught the dragon how to shovel, scoop, and clear. Oh my gosh. Look. He's cleaning up dragon poop. Oh my goodness. And one by one, the townsfolk all began to lose their fear. Now can I have my story, begged the dragon on his knees. So Leo read the book six times. A dragon's hard to please. It's yours to keep, said Leo, as he clambered back on Ned. Oh, thank you, cried the dragon, and he bowed his scaly head. When Leo reached his home at last, the cheers were long and loud. His parents hugged him very tight. Well done, you've made us proud. Now Leo's a hero. His parents have agreed. He doesn't have to fight at all. He's left in peace to read. It. All his magical friends are reading with him too. And that's the end. The end. I have one more book to share with you today. Kind of quick and short. There's another dragon in it, because dragons are awesome, right? I think so. This one's called Good Night Baddies. And I thought because all of our books today had lots of different characters from different stories. So we had Hansel and Gretel Witch. We had the Snow White Witch. We had the Troll from the Billy Goat's Gruff. We had dragons who were pretty naughty. So this book is about when all the bad guys have to go to sleep, and it's called Good Night Baddies. Good Night Baddies, written by Deborah Underwood, illustrated by Julie Kangas. They work together. There's the big bad wolf and the three little pigs. You know that story. There's the giant, and there's Jack. You know that story too, Jack and the Beanstalk. Sun dips down, the day has gone. Witches, wolves, and giants, <sighs> yawn. Queen and dragon, troll and gnome, tired baddies, head for home. They go. Going home. Baddie buddies meet each other, share their news, and greet each other. Did you get your treasure back? Did you catch that awful Jack? Baddies sit politely dining, no one throwing food or whining. It's important to be polite. All day long, they must be vile. They have to be wicked in all their stories. Now at night, they chat and smile. Evil queen, take off your crown. Trade pajamas for your gown. Tuck your poison fruit away. Find Snow White another day. Poor old troll, your life is tough. A muddy wait for three goats gruff. You deserve a nice long scrub. So add some bubbles to the tub. Wolves today was not so good. You didn't catch Red Riding Hood. You huffed and puffed without success. But brush your fangs, please, nonetheless. You have to brush your teeth every day. Rumpelstiltskin wants a story, one that's sweet, not grim or gory. Dragon. A refreshing drink will quench your fire, don't you think? Bedtime now, but giant's scared. 
helpful witches come prepared. Look, their wands are lighting up. Underneath the bed, they peer. Nope, no princesses hiding here. Dragons are afraid of princesses? Are you afraid of princesses? I think they're all right. Baddies turn to sleepy heads, tuck each other into beds, warm and cozy, snuggled tight. Baddies read by candlelight. Underneath a starry sky, sing a baddie lullaby. Day will bring more evil schemes. Good night, baddies. Sour dreams instead of sweet dreams because they're bad guys. So it's sour dream. And I have one more song that I thought we should sing together. It's about reading. I think you'll like it. Ready? The more we read together, 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 the more we read together, the happier we'll be. Read big books and small books and short books and tall books. The more we read together, the happier we'll be. And I'm so happy that you joined me today. And we will see each other hopefully soon. We miss you at the library. Bye.